everyone today we are learning about quick prop quick prop is a module in schrodinger software suite which is used to do computational adme वैसे तो एडीएम ही हम लोग फार्मेसी में पढ़ते ही रहते हैं लेकिन दैट इज असेसमेंट टेक्निक सो पीपल दोज हु वॉन्ट टू डू कॉम्पिटेशनल असेसमेंट ऑफ द कंपाउंड दे हैव डिजाइंड सो कॉम्पिटेशनल ए डी एम ई कम्स हैंडी इन दैट सो दिस इज वट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न टूडे एंड द नेम ऑफ द सॉफ्टवेयर मॉड्यूल इन द शॉर्ट एंड जो सॉफ्टवेयर सूट इज क्विक प्रॉम सो दिस इज हाउ द विंडो लुक्स लाइक and this is called as maestro environment this entire black screen and if you will go to the task bar and we'll go to adme and molecular properties so here is the place which is highlighted in blue which you have to click in order to reach to the window wherein you can do adme analysis so this is how the window is going to look like uh both uh, the uh, fast mode and the normal mode are exactly similar there is only the difference of four five uh, descriptors and uh, the data is less in only the four five descriptors otherwise uh, the values are more or less same so now this is the place where uh, you have to choose uh, between the normal mode and the fast mode between the normal mode and the fast mode we only have the difference in the data and that to for very few parameters like 4 or 5 and the reason be because uh, for the general mode where it takes a lot of time uh, the statistical calculations are really extensive and long so that is why between the fast mode and the normal mode you may see the difference in the data but that let me i try i today that is going to be really minute and if you want you can choose identify the most similar drug molecule option also if you uh, you know want to know whether the um, chemical structure you are working with is matching to some other structure or not and uh, once it runs your uh, output is divided into many sections and the first is primary metabolites and reactive functional groups so what is the purpose of this uh, um, this uh, this section so the purpose is that it is going to tell you that once it is ingested and it reaches inside our body what all secondary and primary metabolites are going to be uh, are going to uh, you know uh, come after this after the metabolism of this uh, particular compound so these are uh, these are all the indications it is giving giving that all these uh, can happen and uh, all these uh, metabolites may produce that uh, i will still say may because it is a computational prediction we are yet to validate it in wet lab and these are the following metabolic reactions which contribute to the uh, metabolic descriptor section and uh, it is showing that which all reactions are present and known today wherein this compound can be involved so this is all the uh, this is all what this compound is uh, capable of uh, doing once it is in the respective area and these are the following reactive functional groups which contribute to the you know uh, uh creation of the reactive functional uh, species so these are all the groups which are present in the chemical structures and uh, now this section is called as principal descriptors and these principal descriptors are created by studying the drugs which are already present in the market so as you also know that lipinski also started like that so what lipinski did initially was he started studying the compounds which are druggable you know already that not all, all chemicals are drugs right only few uh, compounds are designated as drugs why because um why because uh because compounds have certain qualities which need uh, to be there in the structure of the chemical compound in order to be called as a, called it as a drug so the uh, you know the properties in front of you right now they are uh, the ones which are 
uh, found out and which are kept in this uh, particular section by studying 100% of the drugs. And the uh, values which are here for the chemical compound we just ran, uh, the data is computed by you know studying all that data. So uh, can you see these parentheses? So in this parenthesis, you will see that there is a range. It says, for example, for the molecular weight, it says 130 to 725. So this is the data, which is approximately of 95% of the drugs which were studied. So this is sort of the general data we have. So, uh, you know, so where does your drug stand? Uh, while the data ranges from 130 to 725. So you can see the molecular weight of your uh, chemical compound is 442.378, which is the median of this data and which tells us that yes, this drug can be used. Yes, this chemical can be used as a drug. So this is how we infer our result and th this is how we uh, see our results. So you already have the uh, margins, the, uh, you know, margins in which your uh, data can rotate. So for example, if the molecular weight of the chemical compound you have, uh, you know, prepared is, uh, let's say, 85. Okay, so now this 85 is out of bound of the range which we have, which is 130 to 725, which means that the that that so tiny compounds uh, cannot be used as a drug. And it definitely not. Uh, so I won't say that this is the uh, verdict that they cannot be used as a drug. So final verdicts, verdict comes when you go through all the descriptors you have. So once it is uh, fulfilling its, uh, you know, criteria in all of them and the next which I'm going to show you, then eventually you're going to give a verdict. But right now, let us say that it is out of bound for one descriptor, which is molecular weight. Now, in the other section, we have predictions for properties also. These are all the properties which are calculated in wet lab experiments also. And that is how the ADME is done. It is just that the quick prop is doing computational assessment by studying the structure of the chemical which you have uploaded. So let's say, let's talk about octanal water ratio. It says it's 0 0.310, which tells me that the compound is a reasonably hydrophobic and may may it's not necessary but there's a chance that it may cross the membrane right and what is the uh, what is the uh, range for it it's minus 6.5 to 0 0.5 so it is fitting into my data these are the other uh, properties in the same section one can choose uh, the properties related to what they are interested in. Like I said, if you are somebody who works in the area of neuroscience, let's say, so the properties like uh, CNS activity and BBB and human rule absorption, these are all parameters are very much important. And Lipinski rule of five as a rule of thumb is anyway is of utmost importance. So let us use quick prop now. So before using quick prop, we have to import few structures. So I have kept few structures ready. I'm not importing more. I'm uh, I'm importing only one. So let us import it. You can see the structure has appeared here. So let's say today I'm going to run a computational ADME on it, and I want to see whether it is druggable or not. So I'll go to my task window, I'll find where quick prop is and I'll come here. Like I have already told you, there is a little bit of difference between fast mode and the regular mode. So for this experiment, I'm choosing the fast mode and this is the external uh, option, which says that if you want to find five most similar drug molecules, you can do that. And I will write test one and I'll run it. So quick crop runs very fast. In no time, we are going to have results with us. So after uh, you will receive results here, go back uh, and listen to the analysis of the results we have received. I'm going to tell you about what each parameter in the quick prop results section means. 
So if you want to see and check whether your job has been done or not, you can go to jobs tab here. You can click it and go to monitor and see whether it has been done or not. All right, now you can see that the quick pro, uh, quick prop result is already out and this is how it writes it here. So if you want to uh, see the result, you can either go to table section and this is the compound which we are working with and see all the information are, is coming in the header section. It's shape, it's size, it's volume, number of groups it has its total surface area and like that percent human oral absorption capo 2 permeability blood brain blood brain barrier etc so if you don't want to see it like this we have another way if you want to read your results textually so go to jobs and go to monitor this task double click it and see your results are here. So you can copy and paste these results in your uh, Word file and eventually you can analyze it and uh, then you can uh, report your results. So see here it is telling you the details of the primary metabolites and reactive functional groups it may have. Then here it is showing you the principal descriptors which has total molecular weight, total surface area, total uh, rotatable bonds, hydrogen bonds like that, and then the prediction of the properties. So these are the properties in general wherein everybody is interested. So if you are, if you are someone who has, uh, you know, uh, developed a new compound in their research work, and are about to start checking their ADME. So you can always come here and see it once for yourself, what all you are going to expect in your uh, output. And also if you have not synthesized the compound yet, so you know the minimum things about the uh, compound uh, will be given here. So then you can actually decide if you really want to make it or not as well. Right. So this is the uh, data of polarizability. This is octanol uh, gas ratio. This is water gas ratio. This is octanol water. So, for example, octanol water ratio is a good uh, parameter to see whether your compound is hydrophobic or hydrophilic. And then this is the log value for aqueous solubility. Then this is for serum protein binding. This is for blood brain barrier crossing and it is also telling you the number of primary metabolites which are going to uh, be there in the body if one takes it and it's CNS activity and uh, potassium channel blockage log values apparent CACO2 permeability which means whether it will be absorbed in intestines or not so this is how you are going to reach to your result and like I said uh, it is also going to tell us the name of any five uh, molecules which are similar to the one which I uploaded on Maestro. So these are the uh, percentage of similarity. So when I say similarity, I mean similarity at the level of uh, the structure. So then uh, these are the uh, Lipinski descriptors and then we are done. So this is how the uh, results from QuickProp are taken out and later analyzed. So if you are someone who is working in the area of uh, 
dermatology, then uh, you should be focusing more on the parameters which are uh, which, which are going to tell you more about how hydrophilic or phobic your drug is going to be, whether it will be absorbed by the membrane and features like that. And of course, Lipinski, you cannot uh, omit that. If you are somebody who is working on diseases like liver, heart or something, so you will be interested in whether your drug will be, you know, will be binded to the uh, blood protein and it will reach to the organs or not. So then you should uh, uh, follow those type of parameters. If you are somebody who is working in neuroscience, the parameters like blood brain barrier and others will be useful for you. So whenever you use quick prop, please go through the disease you're working on and then appropriately choose the uh, parameter from quick prop to defend your results. So this is how it is done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please write it to me in the comment section. Thank you.